All right, this will be a quick video on how to do a firmware update on a Top Gun uh, older style Hyper 2, Hyper V, GR3, GR5 uh, GPS receivers. Uh, just open up your browser, go to Top Gun positioning, log in if you haven't already logged in. I'm already logged in. I can hit Top Gun and under Top Gun we will go to products and under products we will scroll down find your receiver type I'm going Hyper-V because that's what I'm actually updating go to Hyper-V hit the little firmware update software button at the bottom um, get the firmware down here not the release notes uh, the auxiliary firmware typically isn't something that you need to install if so and there's going to be a different video for you but we'll just download the actual GNSS firmware it's going to download so we'll show this in the folder once it's downloaded it is I can double click and I'll just copy this out it's a zip and I'll save it to wherever you actually prefer storing the actual files I'm going to put it into my Top Gun folder under firmware and I'll make a Hyper-V and we'll make a new folder call it this is 4.8 because that's the version of the firmware that we're loading on here just confirm it says yeah 4.8 right here so 4.8 double click and we'll just paste it in here so now I have the firmware so I can close the web page you have to open up top count receiver utility we'll hit connect and uh, before you do this uh, you actually want to change the application mode defaults to receiver managing that's its uh, default position here but we want to go firmware loading we'll hit device connect and uh, this is where I have a virtual, not a virtual, but an actual COM port that's plugged into the side of my computer because I don't have a COM1, but it comes up as COM5. It has to be done with a serial cable. This is the time where I'll actually power up my Hyper-V. So we'll hit connect. Receiver ready. We'll hit firmware loading. It's uh, uh, We're uh, loading the receiver, not any of these other options. We are going to be using two files. Uh, a soft break capture method is typically 99% of the time what I want over here, so we'll hit next. If the receiver is connected, you will see that it'll give you its current version, so mine is at 47P10, but we're installing 4.8, so we'll hit next. Uh, these are just default settings for your serial port, so I'm happy with that and now it's asking for the firmware and this is where we'll kind of uh, browse through the files that we just saved so we'll hit browse uh, mine should be uh, one up oh this is what it is so we'll go here so it's asking for ram image ldr that's where that file is and in the same folder you'll see there's another file and the program is automatically looking for the right file so there's a RAM image LDR and a main LDP and if the receiver is connected and everything's correct we should see uh, the slow loading bar going on right now so just wait till it's actually finished All right, firmware has been successfully installed. If you have a talking receiver like I do, the Hyper 2 or Hyper V, it'll shut down and it'll power back on. And once it's back on, it's nice to actually go and verify that it took. So what we will do is I'll go into device, I'll change it to that initial receiver managing mode, hit device, hit connect. Once again, I'll have to change my connection parameters if they don't default to the serial port, and it has to be the serial port that we connected to and uploaded the firmware with. So, in my case, COM5. Hit OK, no need to change anything here. As long as the receiver is on, it should connect. And any messages over here you can kind of typically ignore. But uh, if you go into information, now your firmware should say 4.8, and that's exactly what we got. So, there's nothing else we need to do here. Now just disconnect and uh, proceed with uh, working in the field with the new firmware. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know.